Kate Hardcastle is the host of the Rock and Roll Business Podcast and a consumer expert. Hi, Kate. Hello, Matt. Kate, did you get tickets? No, and I certainly wasn't going to buy them either, Matt. I prefer my venues to be very cheap, very small, very intimate, well, we and do, uh, Kate, one but... where I can afford a beer, you know? I just feel I totally understand that we are in a world of the experience economy, and fans, of course, have got that fear of missing out. They want to be there. Maybe even another generation want to listen to the music their parents introduce them to. But this is the world of the music industry, particularly since streaming, because as we know, live music is now the primary revenue That's source for the, the industry. Money. Exactly. Well, uh, Simon's been in touch saying that uh, Keir Starmer has missed the point. It's not about the affordability of tickets, which is obviously an issue, which you've touched on, but the gripe is that the tickets were advertised at one uh, price point. The demand price meant this uh, price was then unavailable, and you had to, once you got to the front of the queue, you, lots of people thought, oh, I've just got to just fork out for it. So actually making mm. it even more expensive than the point you were making that it was already expensive to go to these things. Yeah, I think we've got to ensure that when this investigation the government have promised is done, which mainly is to look at the tout element of it, it does look into dynamic pricing, which is a practice that, as you said, is used in many other industries, airline travel particularly, um, but that we can see a transparency for the consumer. There is one thing organisations, promoters, bands, etc., deciding they want to use this model. It's another thing entirely it being fair. So the clarity on the screen of this many tickets at this this amount will go on sale and then it's almost in terms of that lottery element that the first contributor mentioned she felt almost like it was a gaming element did she want to stay on and pay the higher price or was she going to pull away and actually decide this wasn't for her and when we think about budgeting all of those things that are so important to us as we come up to autumn winter fuel prices etc spending a lot of money on concert tickets because we feel the pressure the moment has to be something we've got to buy into it's not a very fair practice and I think you know whilst this system definitely helps to make live events um, maximise in terms of profits, profits for everyone involved, it's got to be that balance act between the fair access, the revenue, and for what fans feel like is, is a fair, respectful process from the bands that they know and love. And you made the point before, you prefer your venue smaller and your, your, your <laughs> ticket price is even smaller. Lower. Um, is, there a, is there a risk that a sort of a clamp down on the... Basically, maybe once every 12 months kerfuffle of people trying to get tickets. Last year, it was sort of Taylor Swift. This year, it's Oasis. You know, maybe one of my stand-up tours next year will be the uh, the thing that brings <laughs> brings Britain to a standstill. Um, is there a risk that in trying to clamp down on those enormous once-a-year things, it actually makes life harder for some of the smaller venues and the smaller acts that you're talking about? There's this huge push towards live events, and we know why, but the fact is it's a multi-billion pound industry worldwide. Also, then, once you get into the venue, there's the question about merchandise. I have some head scratching to do, about 50 quid for a T-shirt these days, I've got to ask. So we've got to think about the fairness for the punter, but it is also that case of understanding where is your budget, what can you afford to do? Just not being sucked into the marketing for raw about you having to be there. There is no necessity to be there. It's great if you can afford to be in the moment. But we kind of hype these situations up. So we saw it, as you said, last year with Taylor Swift and the Eras Tour. But there were multiple dates, multiple venues. I think if you do want to absolutely commit the budget and you want to go, you've got to be patient, but you've got to be decisive while these uh, technologies are still uh, in play. But as we see the rise and rise, rise of AI and intelligent systems, I think we're probably going to see more of it to come rather than less.